Hi, this is Kishore Ramaswamy, Application Engineer with Optus North America. Today I'll be showing part one of a six-part series on tips and tricks in SPIOS. I hope that you find it useful, and as always, don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. Okay, so to get things started off, uh, the first tip that I will be talking about is understanding the precision of a simulation. So here we're talking about when you run a simulation, um, how many rays do you need to include in the simulation to really trust your results? And what does precise actually mean in the context of a simulation? So as you know, uh, SPIOS, when we run our simulations, uh, essentially we propagate millions and millions of rays uh, to try to represent the distribution of different light sources in the simulation. So whether it's an LED, a bulb, or maybe, in some, maybe even some sort of ambient lighting, the idea is that if we propagate randomized rays and uh, increase this number to a very large amount, we can represent the actual emission of that particular light source as closely, closely as possible. But the question always is, how many rays is enough to give an accurate simulation? And the answer uh, essentially comes down to uh, the sampling of the sensor and also what sort of precision is necessary for a particular simulation. So you can think of it as uh, a particular pixel of a sensor. Uh, the more rays that strike that pixel, the more precise its value will be. If it has only one ray in the result, it won't have a very reliable uh, representation of the value, whereas if it has 100 rays that are hitting that particular pixel, it will have a more you'll have more confidence in the result that it's reporting. So essentially the idea is the, the higher you increase the sensor sampling, uh, the smaller each pixel will become, which means the less rays are available for each pixel, which means you need more rays in the simulation. So for this particular example, we'll look at trying to decide um, you know, how many rays are actually required in a particular simulation and what are some of the consequences of not having enough rays in the simulation. So when we talk about precision, the first thing that we talk about is uh, repeatability and reliability. So if I run a simulation and I get a result coming back to me, how repeatable is that result? If I run the same simulation 10 times, will I be getting the same result on every iteration? And this is largely affected by the number of rays in the simulation. So you can see here, if we run a simulation with 10,000 rays, so the far left, the maximum value in the result uh, actually has quite a large variation. So it can change from as high as about 27,000 in this case to as low as uh, about 25,000. Uh, in this case, we're looking at a, a headlamp, so the candela output. That is uh, a quite a large variation for we're simply rerunning the exact same simulation. And you can see as this number of rays is increased from 10,000, uh, 100,000, sorry, to 1 million to 10 million, that result starts to converge on the same value on every iteration. So we're getting closer and closer to having repeatable simulation results. Reliable is another uh, important part when we talk about precision. If you get a certain value as um, your output from the simulation, you need to be able to trust that that value is actually reliable. So you can actually use that value for reporting or for comparing with uh, maybe a measurement value, but you need to have confidence that the value is actually representative of the situation that you're looking at. And you can see here, increasing the ray count from as low as 100,000 to as high as 1 billion the maximum candela value uh, changes drastically at the beginning and then less drastically at the end. So we see the results converging on the same value. Again, this tells us that as we are increasing the rays further and further, our result is getting more reliable because it is not changing as significantly as we go from, let's say, 100 million to 1 billion. So what we are showing here is more of a trial and error. We're running several simulations and trying to assess how reliable is the result. But in, in reality, we would need a better way of determining whether a result is 
uh, is precise. We wouldn't necessarily want to run 10 simulations to determine if I have a reliable result. So we have a tool uh, inside of SPIOS for assessing the precision of a particular simulation. This tool is called the Precision Map. It's available in both the intensity sensor and the irradiance sensor in the tools um, drop down menu. So you can see in these slides where it's located. The precision map essentially gives us a metric which tells us how many rays are integrated into each pixel and how much we can trust a particular simulation result. So if we look at the precision map for the intensity sensor on the left, it, when, you, when you click on that precision map function, it will open a new window. And this new window gives you a measure from 0 to 100 of how precise the result is. And it's actually an inverse scale, meaning closer to 0 is extremely precise, and closer to 100 is uh, essentially not precise whatsoever. And you can see the same trend that we saw in the previous slides as we increased from 100,000 all the way up to 1 billion. You can see the precision getting better and better as we go, uh, as we increase this rate count. Specifically in the section where we actually have um, some important lights, you know, the areas around the corner of the map are not so important for this particular result. So we're really focusing on the center of the result, which is the, the valuable part of this simulation. You can see the precision going from about 60% in the first, to so the top left, uh, down to almost zero in the bottom right. And so this is a way that you can assess from one from a particular simulation how precise that result is and whether you can actually trust the value that it's giving you. Typically, we aim for less than 10% uh, in the precision to have confidence in the result that it's reporting. Anything more than 10% should be taken with uh, a grain of salt and and maybe investigated. So uh, essentially launching a simulation with more rays to have confidence in the value that you're reporting. And this becomes even more critical when you're comparing a simulation result with something from a photometric camera where you're trying to correlate simulation with reality. You need to have a high precision simulation result in order to trust the comparison with uh, a measurement device. So this is an important, uh, important tool and I think it's one that not many people take advantage of. Uh, so definitely uh, try to utilize this. It's available in both the intensity and the irradiance uh, XMP.